Hello, 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 everybody. Happy Friday and welcome to our, I think this is number three of our PMU summer sessions. Today, we're gonna dive right into talking about pigment, modifying, and dilution. Guys, I think this one's super important because when I started out as a permanent makeup artist, God, like nine years ago, I think now, um, it was a lot of uh, inorganic pigments and we modified a lot. So clients were left with like, hey, hon, how are you? Um, clients were left with like a funny hue sometimes. Like if we over modified, we were left with like a pink, a salmon kind of hue. Then there was like all the rage moving to organic pigments and those started feeling a little bit ashy over time. So it kind of went from one extreme to the other. And as artists, we were kind of left, hey, hey Shelly, um, we were kind of left with, what do we do? You know, how do we get a good healed result for our clients that doesn't heal too warm and leave behind too much of like a, a salmon kind of hue or too cool in the skin. So I think color theory has come a very long way in the last few years um, as far as not just picking something right out of the bottle, really assessing the client's skin tone to kind of see what makes sense for them healed through their skin. And that's another thing we have to remember, guys. A lot of times as artists, we're taught, and I don't really think it's anything that's like the fault of educators. I think color theory for per cosmetic tattooing, permanent makeup, however you guys word it, is so broad and so vast that it's really hard to actually teach it unless it's taught in its own um, class in its own bubble. So we get some, you know, we touch base a little bit when we talk about color theory in my two day class, but it's really that apprenticeship program that you're diving in, you're really learning, you're seeing the colors heal in the skin, you're seeing how they react to different skin tones. And that's really how you learn and grow with color theory. So I don't think it's necessarily like the educators, you know, a fault on any educators part, um, it, it's just you need to pick someone that really teaches color theory well and really understands it. And getting back to my first point, I think over the last few years, it's come a very long way with cosmetic tattooing. We're learning, we're growing, we're understanding that you can't just pick a color out of a bottle. I think that was kind of what was happening before. You know, we were picking up a bottle, looking at it through the bottle and saying, oh yeah, this will work. My client has dark brown hair. So let's choose this pigment for them. This is what we need. This is what's going to work. But we're finding that that's not the case. Those clients might come back and they're healed too dark. They might be healed too cool. And that's because the correct color wasn't chosen for their skin tone. And it possibly was not modified and diluted correctly. So that's our topic today. I don't have a ton of time because I do have a client waiting downstairs, but we are going to talk about modifying and diluting your pigments. It's really, really, really important. And I think it's kind of that next level step that really gets you the healed results that are going to be spot on 95% of the time for every single one of your clients. So let's dive into that, guys. Um, I know that when my clients come in, they're very trusting, they're very, you know, they're like, do whatever you want. But a lot of them also will say, um, so it's summer and my hair is a little bit lighter, or it's summer, so I've added highlights, or, you know, my hair is darker than it usually is. There's a lot of focus on like head hair. Um, my approach to color is a little bit different and I always tell my clients this. I will tell them, that's great, you know, but we really don't want to focus on the head hair. We want to focus on your skin. So when my client comes in, I'm automatically looking at their skin, assessing their skin tone, and kind of deciding a color mix in my head of what will heal appropriate through their skin. That's a super important part to remember, guys. When you are choosing color, when you are deciding, 
how much modifier you want to put in, what modifier you want to put in, and how much dilution you want to put in, we need to remember we are looking at this color eventually through the client's skin. So it's different from other color theory, guys. We can't just take, assume that these colors that we're putting in the skin are going to look like they do on a white piece of paper. That's not the case. We are going to be looking at this color eventually through layers and layers of skin. And that client's undertone and overtone, thickness of the skin, thinness of the skin, all play a part in that healed result. So when we talk about color, my client will come in, I've got a chart that I um, will refer to, I look at the color of their skin, if they're tan, I'll kind of pick an area on the skin that um, you know maybe isn't as tan. You can look at the underside of the forearm here. You wanna pick a, a part of their body that is pretty natural and not um, affected by the sun or super tan or covered in bronzer. Once we get to that point, once I have assessed the undertone of the skin, we're going to start mixing. Now, I will always start with a base color, for me, that tends to usually be permablends forest brown or espresso. I don't tend to use espresso too much, to be honest, because it's a very cool, dark color. So my go-to is usually forest brown. From there, I get my modifiers and my dilution, and we start mixing according to the client's skin tone. Another thing I always tell my clients is, you're gonna leave here and these brows are gonna be warm. That's okay, again, because eventually we are looking at this color through skin. So we know when the color heals and when that skin heals over the color, it's automatically going to neutralize, guys. It's automatically going to cool that color down a little bit. So if you pick a color and if you tattoo a color into the skin that is perfect and looks like the healed result you want, you've missed the mark. And this is because we know as artists that color is going to cool down in the skin. So we want that color to be a little bit warmer. Hey guys, thanks for joining. Um, we want that color to be a little bit warmer. We want that room in the skin so that we, we know when the pigment settles and when those molecules move in the skin, which they always do, we're going to get to that healed result that we want. So another thing I always tell my clients, if this color's warm, we don't care. This is not the end all and be all. When your client leaves the studio, that's not their healed result, so it's okay. So the, the brows might look a little warm. So what I usually do, I pick the modifier first. My favorite modifiers are permablends. The label is um, uh, wiped off on this one. Blazing Copper. We have all these on the site too, guys. Blazing Copper and Golden Corrector. These are my two favorite modifiers. Um, what I tend to do is pick the modifier that works best with the undertone. So I simply swatch Hi, Denise. Thanks for joining. Um, I simply swatch the modifier on the underside of their forearm. From there, I pick the color that makes the most sense for them. So basically what we do, hi, Julian. Julian's the other owner of Micro PMU Tattoo Supply Guys. He does um, body art. So basically what I do is I pick the modifier that disappears into their skin. You don't really want to see this when you put it on the skin. You're gonna swatch some of this here. You're gonna swatch both your modifiers and you're gonna see which one blends the most. That is how I choose what the base modifier should be. You pick the one that blends into the skin the best and then from there, I simply take my brown, which is my value. We're adding value into this modifier to bring it to brown and to make it darker. I pick my brown and I simply mix that in to the modifier until we get to a point where that brown is dark enough. Guys, we are not looking to oversaturate these brows. 
We're not looking for like a complete heavy dense coverage. We're looking for something that is simply changing the value. A couple steps, a, a couple gradients up. When it heals in the skin, it's going to do its thing. If your technique is correct, if your color choice is correct, it's going to do its thing. It's going to darken up in there. It's going to look lived in and it's going to cool down. So when you choose color, guys, we're not looking for something that's like, you know, a, a total 180 from the healed result that we want. We want something really soft and we want something that is just a, a, a little bit darker than the modifier, like not a ton. You wanna be in the video, Julia? Um, I'm going to ignore that because I think you're still at work. Um, so again, first step, assess the client's undertone. Second step, choose your modifier. Third step, choose your brown and add that value to the modifier until you get to a neutral brown result or a blonde. If the client is blonde and they come in and, and you know that you need like a taupey blonde heel, I can literally make every color I need from Forest Brown, Espresso, Golden Corrector, and Blazing Copper with Dilution. I can make blondes, redheads, medium brown, dark brown, any color that you need, I can make from these four colors. Now that we understand modifiers, and these are gonna be based, the amounts that you use guys are gonna be based on each client. It's really hard to say each client that has brown hair gets three drops of this, four drops of this, four drops of this. It's almost impossible. You need to learn how to assess the skin. You need to learn how to use these tools. These are tools, guys, and you need to learn how to use them to get a good healed result. Um, the client's gonna talk to you. The client's gonna, going to tell you what they're looking for. Are they looking for um, a more dense result? Are they looking for something soft and airy? All of that plays a part in how much modifier you use and how you layer this color into the skin. Dilution is also something that nobody really talked about when I was learning permanent makeup. A little bit, um, a little bit more than modifiers actually, but this is going to be your best friend, guys. I love Permablend Thin um, Dilution Solution. You're going to add this as your final step. I don't ever tattoo anymore without dilution. This is what's going to help guide the opacity of the healed result. This dilution is what is going to be very helpful when the client tells you, I want something really soft and airy. I want something um, very sheer as a healed result. This is what's going to get you there, guys. Dilution. You have to have dilution in your arsenal. It's very, very, very important. Um, and again, very hard to say that each client is going to, you know, someone with brown hair is going to be three dilution. So it, it all depends. It depends on their skin. It depends on what they want the healed result to be. So modifiers and dilution, guys, your, your new best friends for permanent makeup. You should not be tattooing without these, especially the dilution. There's no way to really get a beautiful, sheer, um, soft result without adding dilution. I mean, I don't think there is. Um, so what I do, again, choose my modifier, add my brown to change that value, and then we're going to add dilution depending on the client's skin type, depending on what we want that healed result to be, and depending on how sheer or opaque the client wants that color to be. If you guys have any questions, I can hang out for like another minute. My client is waiting downstairs, so we can take questions here. You guys are always, always free to um, send us DM messages on Instagram. You can email us at um, micropmutattoosupply at gmail.com. You can message us on Facebook. Um, like I said, guys, we do have the all of these pigments on the site. Um, and I will put the link in the... Hi, Nancy. Do you use dilution from tail to head? I do. I use dilution in the entire brow. Um, I know some artists will kind of do like, a, I don't know what they call it, like a layering method. 
where they'll um, do like a darker blend at the tail and then kind of um, have like three cups of color and then kind of put those different colors throughout the brow. Um, I just use dilution through the entire area. So yes, I do. If I feel like I need to kind of build the tail a little bit more and keep that tail a little bit darker, um, I might have two cups, like one that doesn't have as much dilution and one that has a little bit more dilution. Um, but I tend to just do less coverage in the front. So I just won't tattoo as much in, in the front. I'll just do lighter coverage. Do you do the same as two to three passes? Um, so it depends. It's really hard to say how many passes per person. Usually I can complete the brow I, I don't really do passes so much. I kind of work the area until I feel like it's saturated enough, if that makes sense. So I'll work like the, the back quarter of the brow, the tail going up into the arch until I feel like it has enough saturation. And then I'll do the same going up the brow. So I don't really count passes. I kind of just um, work on the saturation until I feel like it's enough, if that makes sense. Good question, so. Um, and it's gonna vary client to client. And I know every artist's technique is different too. You know, my, the way that I was taught and the way that I do brows is gonna be different from everybody else. Um, but it, it, granted, no matter what your technique is, I feel like you still can really benefit from um, modifiers and dilution. Good, good questions, guys. Okay, I'm gonna jump off because my client is downstairs. Please send all of your questions because I, I, I know there's so many questions about this and I'm very happy to answer all of them. Um, I just can't do them right now. Hi, Nicola, we, oh, we're done. But you can watch the replay. I'm gonna post the replay in a minute and then please send all of your questions that you have because this is a, a great topic and I love answering questions about it. Do you think latex is the same with the shading? No, no, I mean, nothing's the same on latex. Like your, your fake skin is always gonna look different than working on actual skin. And actually, I think your latex always looks more pronounced. I think when you get into the skin, it's always a softer um, result because when you're dealing with latex, you're not dealing with like um, lymph fluid or any bleeding that's possibly there or brow hair. So all those things, when you're talking about tattooing on skin, um, they kind of automatically dilute the pigment and the effect fake skin the latex is kind of you know it's, it's always going to be a little bit more bold in there at least with my experience okay guys i'm hopping off thank you so much for joining please remember next week we're going to have our fourth summer session i'm not sure what the topic is yet but if you guys have an idea send them in the comments send them to me and then we can build that fourth summer session around that and send your questions guys we are so excited to always help you and answer them have a great day